I found this article in uh, a magazine of the United Kingdom, worldradiohistory.com, Electronic Engineering 1941, uh, issue 10. The Electrical Properties of High Frequency Ceramics. It's very, very interesting. Um, and they are talking here about the properties of all kinds of ceramic materials used in electronics, especially, say, coil forms or other or, or capacitors. And the good uh, say thing about this article is, and that I've learned from it, that not all um, ceramic materials are ideal for, for instance, of a coil form. And especially uh, when it regards uh, transmission, it could be that the uh, ceramic material uh, has, is used as a form and a coil is wound on it and you say want to transmit radio energy with that coil on a certain frequency, the, the, the ceramic material gets far too warm. So a lot of energy loss in uh, that ceramic material. And that also means, of course, that um, the material is not ideal. Could be useful for other application where this is no problem, but anyway. So that's, that's interesting, of course, a lot of, say, uh, 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 graphics, let me, grafieken, that's the Dutch word. Graphics is not the right um, translation, but anyway. Well, it brought me to the idea to um, do a kind of experiment. My first idea was, is it possible to wind the coil and then stick into that coil uh, a paper a roll and look if the frequency, whether the frequency changes or the amplitude changes. And when that is the case, you know that the plastic or the whatever material uh, has an effect of damping. And I made in the past an antenna coil. And my experience was that making that antenna coil on a toilet roll worked better compared to the situation where I made the same uh, antenna coil for shortwave, it was an antenna tuner, when I made that in the same way on a, a plastic tube. And in that case I used grey plastic for sewage pipes. That worked, in my opinion, as far as I could see. I did not do very precise measurements, but anyway, it worked, in fact, less ideal compared to paper or to uh, yellow plastic, the plastic that is used in the uh, electricity installations. So, um, this is my setup. Uh, it is a kind of lame experiment because this coil here is now connected to the oscillator, but that's not the problem. But the problem is that this coil uh, can move, the wine is can move. So, it means that it is not always very stable. But again, uh, that question, uh, does it, uh, has the material, the plastic material inside or the paper material inside an effect on the damping, the damping of the coil? And that's especially important when we are talking about radio coils. We must say, uh, avoid that the, the form on which the antenna coil is made uh, damps the frequency that is um, uh, re received on that antenna coil. So this is a very, uh, like I say, kind of lame uh, experiment and I don't want to say, uh, conclude all kinds of things about it, but we can see a little bit the effects this is a plastic tube here uh, and 
uh, when I say we can see the effects, we cannot, then I also mean we don't see the effects. I now move that plastic tube here inside the, the coil. It is now on 3.995 megahertz. I move it in. Does it change the frequency somewhat? Well, it does not. Well, it goes to 4 megahertz, but that is no, not a reliable conclusion. I think because the I move now the I've moved the windings a little bit. So when you want to do this in a serious way, you need a coil that is very properly fixed. Anyway. So my conclusion: plastic does not damp the the uh, the frequency. Damp and not not the frequency, but the energy that is sent out by the oscillator this is we know this all here I put it in now here it's now on 3990 of course this oscillator is also not crystal stable and that is in this case uh, also not a good idea because we need say the the deviation etc et put in this here now so now it's put in 3983. I take it out 3993. Well, I think it's not a relevant um, difference, but very important when you want to do this in a serious way, so not the way I do it now, um, you need a very stable oscillator. And perhaps you can see differences. We can now make, uh, say, uh, the damping better visible when we stick in, of course, a piece of iron or steel into that coil. I put the scope. Sorry for all the movements. So now we are on 3.994. I stick in. This bolt, kind of bolt, and you can surely see that energy out of the oscillator is sucked up by the, uh, the metal, steel in this case. The amplitude goes down, frequency also changes a little bit, that's also logical. I don't do all the theory, there's an enormous bunch of radio theory around this, say, far too simple experiment, but anyway. Um, so, it, it keeps oscillating, but energy is sucked in. So there's damping on the coil, and that could be a, a good idea when you want damping in certain electronic situation, electric situation, could also be a bad idea. In radio tech, uh, it's used in both ways. I st this is a st typical steel pin, stick it in. So there's more damping, much more. Take it out, stick it in, take it out, etc, etc. Finally, this is a piece of a transformer and the material of which transformer coils are made is special. This looks not special, looks as a simple piece of steel, but it isn't so. It has typical, typical qualities to do its work on 50 Hz or on 60 Hz. And I've rolled up now here a piece of that uh, steel. There's often, by the way, between the uh, all these plates, a kind of lacquer or a kind of oxidation that functions to um, get less eddy currents into the coil of the uh, of the transformer, so that it does not want to saturate its its magnetic field. When it saturates, the transformer doesn't work nice any longer. It doesn't do its job. Uh, not in the way that it was planned. But anyway, I was talking about here 
this piece of that material and now I stick it in let's see what happens stick it in and here the oscillation even stops it means that's the thing that we can conclude stick it in now here stick it in it stops so it it means that a lot of energy out of this oscillator and that oscillator is on three say four megahertz is say um, dissipated in a certain way into that piece of metal that's all that i want to say uh, when you have serious interest uh, study radio technology i read a lot about it every day but uh, to explain this this will take too much time and also a lot of mathematics and uh, that's not my cup of tea i'm interested in all these phenomenon thanks for watching